Hey everybody, we back again. My name's Alex. I'm with my boy Tony, the comic DC extraordinaire. And we're gonna talk to you on a more detailed uh work on Crisis of Infinity Earth. <clears throat> so we're gonna start off with talking about really what we think is who has been the star of this installment of Crisis of Infinity Earth, and that's be the Flash. What do you think about the Flash, Tony? Oh, I I love the Flash. I like when he's the star of, in his movies. Um, you know, like I said, when you're coming off something we did with Flashpoint Paradox, you know, that right there was excellent. You know, mm -hmm. and I've always liked Flash as a character. I think that he's one of those characters that people kind of underrate. Yeah. You know, they kind of forget about him. But um you, you look at as you actually look at his skill set and everything he's capable of doing. It's like he, you know, Flash, you'll sleep on him and he'd be the one to take your ass out. He'd be the one to, you know, send that win the day. Um his stories are to me are always the most impactful too. You know, they they have more heart than anybody else's. Uh as a character, like I said, Barry Allen being my favorite Flash, Barry. Yeah. You know, I just, like I said, he, he, you can relate to him. I think he's one of the better characters in, in comics, period. You know, and I, uh, I hope to see more. I hope they do more with him. You know, and I hope to see more progression with him also. Because, you know, you get into other characters that in, in the Speed Force that come under him, like Wally West, which I think was an, um, one of his pro uh, protégés or whatever. Yeah. Wally's cool, you know, and um, but you know, Barry has always been my guy. I like the work he did in um this one in uh, Infinity Crisis. Cri I mean, excuse me, Crisis on Infinite Earths. Yeah, I like the work he did here, uh, because like I said, he's just an all around solid character, all around, you know. I, so I really enjoyed it because I. Flash, the only thing I really know of the Flash, but he's more of a DC person than I am. He's just a dude running. Uh, but the Christ on Defending the Earth, which I liked it so much because he really had the heart. Like I said, he was the heartbeat of the movie. Uh, and just, you know, they introduced his mother because I never knew about his mother. Uh, and they just introduced so many small things that was cool and through all the different Timelines. He was always kind of, kind of a cool guy. It seems like, um, mm -hmm. yeah, this movie. And overall, <laughs> just to finish with, you know, with, with the flash, what we could talk about here is it's so much better. This flash is so much better than by me being a novice of the flash. It's so much better than that movie that came out with the flash with that dude. Like, <laughs> it was hard because you, because he make you not like that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Flash at all. Yeah, the Ezra Miller's Flash was yeah, terrible. Why I hated yeah. that. Yeah, he a clumsy. Like mm -mm. He was the, clumsy. The, the, go ahead, bro. No, I mean, you know, he was a clumsy, bumbling ass fool. You know, I mean, <laughs> I didn't like him at all. I'm like, this ain't this is not Barry Allen. That that wasn't true, Barry Allen. You know, he he was he was a coward. You know what I'm saying? And um. I'm like, nah, man, you know, running around, pushing people and shit like that. I'm like, that's not yeah. Flash. You know, come on, man. I you know, and then he, that floppy ass running he was doing, you know, let's, let's, I'm like, let's, let's, nah, we got to change this. So I am glad that the DCEU is over with, you know, because they didn't get characters right. Yeah. Um, Very few did they actually get right. You know, but that Barry Allen, mm-mm. He was he was terrible. So, what do you think about Superman in the Flashpoint Paradox? I liked I liked him. He he, he was more of a backseat character. Uh, you know, wasn't much he could do. You know, because you know Superman being my my favorite uh superhero. Of course. You know, yeah, that's my favorite superhero right there, the granddaddy of them all. <laughs> you know, I don't have. You know, it, it was good to see him in a role where he was more just a supporting character. Yeah. You know, um. You know, uh, and then that conversation that he had with himself, the the Superman from I think if if I'm not mistaken, that was the Kingdom Come Superman. Yeah. Where he where he spoke about you know that eventually they'll die. You know, yeah. um, Wonder Woman being 
they're immortal and how eventually they'll die you know uh you know and, and just that no that mortality knowing yeah. that hey you know you could be hurt and, and things like that you know it was good that, to see him there but knowing that you can't just lean on him for this one you know it's it's, it's, it's gonna be much big it's much bigger than him it's gonna take a lot more than just superman you know what I'm saying to win this day you know what I'm saying to accomplish what you what you set out to accomplish so you know and this is just the, the beginning you know the, the tip of the iceberg you know there's a lot more to come when it comes to this the infinite crisis whole storyline this trilogy and so i look forward to it you know and seeing superman there was good and i look forward to how he's going to be used going forward yeah i, I thought it was cool also that conversation he had about being you know he's a powerful mortal but he does die compared to like the ones of uh demigod like wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. uh, and i thought that that was very i mean it was just it was just a good segment with the head which is a a testament to the writing of the whole movie because superman yeah. has always been kind of a a flat linear linear character that you just know okay he's gonna come he's gonna put somebody in the face he's gonna throw something it's over mm -hmm. So for yeah. him to bring it like that, I thought that was a. Uh, it shows vulnerability because sometimes he, and, and even he was talking about the death of Lois. Yeah, because even mm -hmm. though that Superman live a long, you know, he does live a long time more than human expectations. Mm -hmm. He and to have him hurt because of that, they just show the layer of, of characters, which, as a person that like movies and stories, that would give the story. Mm -hmm. more feeling and emotion and make you and draw you in even more. And that was just a little section of that movie. Maybe what? Yeah. Maybe yeah. a minute worth of dialogue. That's all you Yeah, need. yeah. That yeah, exactly. That's really all you need. And, and another thing, another thing in regards to Superman and how I liked his role and his place in this movie was, you know, just to this is what I mean about getting to know Superman. Getting yeah. to deal more, you know, I I've always said detach him from Lois Lane. Yeah, I've always said that. Detach him from Lois Lane so we can get to know Superman. And I think that was another reason why I really was liking and digging what they was doing with Superman here was because there was no Lois. Yeah. Whenever you got Lois involved, you know, we don't, you know, we, I mean, we, we, whenever Lois is involved, we don't get to really see Superman. What we're seeing is a love story. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I'm like, damn, how much we've seen this shit so much. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, look at Barry Allen and and and, and his his girlfriend, or, or or look at Aquaman and Mirror and shit like that. But when it comes, we know they together, but you know it is it's not right up in your face like that, and it's it's not so fucking attached like that. But when you got Superman and Lois Lane, it's like because you know, and one of my things about him is that you know he's so attached to her. It's like, can you do anything without? Lois being involved and and with her not being involved I think that was a big thing for me because now I get to see more let me get to see Superman let's get to see him without this Lois because when she's involved it's, it, it just becomes all about Lois you know and yeah, and glad, yeah they did a good job transitioning from that which was that's what we needed so yeah we need that we need some detachment so seeing and and to what you was saying you know to you like just talking about Superman here, you know, that was a big thing for me. That was really big for me. You know what I'm saying? To to just let me see him. Let me see KLL. Yeah. You know, let, you know, let me let me see what's going on in his head when it's not concerning her. Let me see what's going on in his head when it's just it's, when there's something else bigger than than him and her going on. And that, I thought that was cool, man. That you know, so they did a good job there, you know. And now we talk about my one of my favorite characters of all comic books is old Batman. And in, in this one, they had Batman come in with old, because he was seeing like a, I don't know, was it a different version of Batman? Because of course they had different layers of Batman. But mm -hmm. that's the one where he just where he just saved Dick Grayson from the uh, his parents had got uh, killed in that circus accident. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought I thought it was a good introduction to it because all of us know that uh know that story. But they kind of twisted as a more focused and cold Bruce Wayne who didn't want to get attached to no kid. Yeah. 
And yeah. uh, I think I think that flash, I think that flash was uh was he a counselor or was he uh uh what was his job then? Which he, which with who with counselor? Was uh with, with Flash when he when we when Bruce and Dick first came in to see the Flash mm-hmm. and they was talking to him and he was really like, you know, Bruce, he might be good for you. And Bruce was like, I don't got no time for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Looking at a much harder, much colder Bruce, you know. Yeah. And and, 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 and to and to a degree, I kind of to a degree. I say Bruce when he, he was right when he when he said that, you know, it's kind of, you know, you know, taking on them them kids as a, you know, involving them yeah. in his and what he does in his life was he's just irresponsible. And I'm like, to a degree you're right. To a degree you are right, because you're looking at it from that these are kids, you know, and anything yeah. can happen to them. But it worked out for them. Yeah. You know. So Batman has always been the realist. Of of the yeah. Justice League, you know, he's always been the realist of the because you know you got some of the other ones that are kind of, you know, their virtues and things and the way they look and their perspectives on life is so strong. You got Wonder Woman who, some you know, I love Wonder Woman, but let's be real, we might look at some of her virtues and things she believe in as a little bit delusional. Superman definitely will look at some of the shit he believe in as a bit delusional, you know, but Batman has always been the realist. So when he made those comments and shit, I was like, you know, you're you're right to a degree. I mean, yeah, irresponsible, but you know, look, it worked out for you. And then in this insane world, what the, what the, what they see in that movie, New Jack City, you know, it's gonna take a New Jack cop, take out yeah. a New Jack gangster. Yeah. Sometimes you got to get. Sometimes you got to do things that are kind of mind boggling and, and 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 take risks just as much as the ones you're trying to bring down. You know, yeah, because and then and then the movie, I think this shows another how insightful Barry was because he pretty much helped create the whole dynamic duo, really, just by putting mm-hmm. that little little uh, nugget in Bruce Wayne's mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. And another thing, what I thought was cool about the Flashpoint paradox is we kind of see that it was Barry Allen's idea to create the, the Justice League, really. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of, of, um, in this, yeah, this particular it, story, yeah. Because yeah. ah, I, that, I was like, when he came up with it and stuff, I was like, well, that's cool, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, because I mean, what we've always known it to be either Superman, Wonder Woman, or Batman, particularly yeah. Superman coming up with it. But I thought that was cool, you know, putting Barry Allen at the forefront of that. I yeah. thought that was, you know, that was cool, man, because the story, this story was heavily him, yeah. you know. And and that was that was something good to see. It was refreshing. Yeah, you know, it was yeah, refreshing. It, it, everything has to be about the big three all the time. To somebody outside the big three, they say, "Hey, maybe we need to be working together sometime." <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, and honestly, they should really call it like the big four, or big five, because you know. But we'll talk more about that, you know, in another in another video when concerning expanding that the, the roles of yeah, the of, of characters true. like Barry Allen and 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 and, and the Martian Manhunters. We can we can, we definitely gonna have to get more into that, you know yeah. what I'm saying, a little bit later. You know. And then uh as we move on with the Christ on the Finning Earth. I know nothing about Amazo. That's that's that thing name? Amazo? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And maybe you can now, go into I, and I'm sure they I, know there's a parasite in the thing. Yeah, honestly, I didn't know a whole lot about Amazo or shit like that because when it comes to DC, man, they come up with these fucking characters <laughs> that are kind of like Amazo, Bizarro, Metallo, and the name <laughs> sounds just so damn stupid. Yeah. I really don't pay a whole lot of attention to him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, I thought his role in this movie was good. I thought, damn, I, I thought it, I thought it was very good, and I thought he was. Well, I think because he because he wasn't a, a, a one dimensional character. I, he was very well written, you know. What I'm saying I, I liked his portrayal, mm-hmm. um, and I got to see, you know, saying different aspects, you know, saying different dimensions to that character, man. You know, I think we need to try to focus on writing some of these characters a lot better than the way we do, you know. Yeah, I think it was a good introduction to the uh, to this movie with him because he was such a 
a powerful android and uh, and you know of course they always have androids fight their program not to touch mm -hmm. him. so I, I thought that was I thought he was a good addition and he was like somebody that was innocent because he was being used but at the same mm -hmm. time he was still powerful and impactful through the whole movie yeah and, and it wasn't dominated by him either, even though later on he, he kind of helped redeem himself per se as far as saving the human the human species mm -hmm. but I thought that was a good redemption arc for him it kind of went full circle at the end yeah yeah so and yeah. what do you think about your, your league of criminals <laughs> oh the Ultraman and all them man I with my my only gripe about that is that I didn't get to see more of them. Yeah. But it's it's a very small gripe. Very small gripe. Um I really like to see him. I like the way they was the way they were portrayed. Uh Ultraman and Superwoman and all that, man. They yeah. they were great to me. I, I thought that they were uh, they were amazing, man. I, for for the little bit that we got to see of them. We yeah. didn't just see a group of motherfuckers that was you know, out here, oh, I want to do this and I want to destroy that. Did it? No, you know, they came in, they actually was thinking about you know, what they could do to stop this thing from happening. You know what I'm saying? Well, we now we 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 did think what we thought it was rather Neanderthalish, you know, yeah. like how you're gonna punch this thing, you know, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, but, I'm I, but punch it's, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But but at the same time, it was better than getting the usual crazed villain in there. That with all this mess going on, you still want to do your dumb, your dumb, you know, like, you know, comparing what we see in other villains. Like, let's take somebody like the Joker. And this is all trying to make comparison to why I felt the the League of Criminals was. I like the way they did with them because you'd have the Joker with some stuff going on like this, and he still want to do his Joker mess. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, but I thought the way they did with them was okay. The world coming to an end. Yeah, you know they didn't they didn't go out here doing the same mess that they normally do. You know what I'm saying yeah. they was actually looking at how they're gonna deal with what's going on. So I thought that was that was great. You know to see the act to see some villains actually got them. You know look and say, okay, you know we got a situation here going on. How are we gonna deal with? I mean, because because when I watched it, I said. I said, people. I said, if people not don't actually know this story or whatever, they actually they think y'all were heroes. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. They kids that didn't know no better. Yeah, even though he was doing some, at first thought off because he saved the building so they won't fall on his statue. Like, mm -hmm. this, I mean, we got to move on from that. Then after that, he they kind of got kind of moving on pretty good. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you actually felt for him in the end. Yeah. Yep. So I, I thought that that was good. How they kind of resolved themselves to whatever was gonna happen to them. Yeah. You know, so yep. yeah, that was pretty cool. And oh, and of course your boy Lex Luthor had to make an appearance. What do you think about old Lex? You know, you know, Lex Luthor, you know, he gonna do his thing. Yeah, you know, so headed bastard. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool to see him in there make his yeah. appearance, you know, because he he wasn't, I don't think he was he, in the original comic, he was that big of a of a role in it and his, yeah. I think it was more so his son or something like that. Yeah, it's like yeah. Alexander Luthor or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was cool to see old Lex do his thing. I wish that you know that Lex would have had one of them a bigger, a, a, took more of initiative to to do do something big and be a big hand and helping help. him. Yeah, I thought that. Yeah, was you know what I'm saying. Because that would have been such real a great cool. line. Yeah. Absolutely. So if you can get Lex on board to be right there with you with his with his mind and his intellect, that would have been real good. You know, there's a lot. There's a lot to Lex Luthor too. You know, he's not just he's not just this crazed villain that just want to destroy everything and all oh, chaos all over the place. I think I think one thing about Lex is he thinks that he's the he's the guy, the hero. He wants yeah. to be the savior. You know, but he goes. He has a lot of jealousy and envy in him. That's well, let, one of me, the biggest things to him. To me, Lex Luthor is like the Jared Jones of superheroes. He he always got to have his hands in something. He just wants all the credit. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> he the and Jared that's the of DC Universe, really. And, and, and that's true. He's a, and that's true. You know what I mean? And, and it's like he wants to be the guy. He wants to be the same. He wants to be yeah. the one. But it's like, you know, you got a lot of this negative 
messing you, man. That just so that holds you back. If you can get over your, you know, being jealous, being that you're not number one. Yeah, just like you know, your boy Jerry Jones. Mm -hmm. He just couldn't let you Jerry know? Johnson run the show. He got to have his hands. In. He got to show absolutely. That it's, it's his baby. I'm, you know yep. what? I'm sorry, Cowboy fans. It's just it's just the <laughs> NFL playoffs, and I just had to take a stab at y'all. I'm sorry. That's inappropriate. <laughs> don't don't cancel me. <laughs> I know, right? Them cowboy fans be mad. They pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> they still mad. Right. So, what you think about old Iris? I loved Iris. Man, I loved Iris. I thought she was she, her, she and the Flash were the best two characters. Mm -hmm. Um, they 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 took this, and if you can if you can hand awards out to animated characters, they get it because I, I loved her character. She was she was so real, so down to earth. Um, she was so great for Barry Allen also. I mean, we talk about having a, a, the support system at home, how yeah. much that helps you mm -hmm. in your career. Your, your, you know what I'm saying? When you, when you, when oh, you talk right. about building your career or anything yeah. outside the home, when you got that support system, man, you know, women don't understand how much that impacts us, how helpful that is. Yeah. And she was absolutely amazing. The relationship between her and Barry was was the most beautiful thing in all this movie. It was the, one of the most beautiful relationships I've seen since. It's been uh, better than it's yeah. like how Spider Man and Mary Jane was. It was better, better than that, man. It's it better. was much better than that. Better. Yeah, because, because Spider Man is kind of it was always yeah, kind of toxic a little bit. Yeah, Spider Man and Mary Jane was it was rather rocky, rocky, and and, and I don't want to say toxic, but I would say rocky because. It wasn't that Spider-Man and Mary couldn't get along. Mary couldn't deal with the responsibility, the responsibilities that Spider-Man had. Yeah. You know, and that was her thing. You know, Spider-Man, you know, is with, with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. And it's hard for those heroes to juggle being a superhero and then having a, a normal life. You know, and they yeah. the thing is they can't have normal lives. That's what the hero needs to understand, and that's what their loved ones have to understand. They can't have a normal life. That's just like what we say about Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan can't come out and go see a movie as regular like we can. Yeah. He can't go out to just Longhorn Steakhouse or, or Roost Chris like we can. He can't do that. Yeah. He'll never have to, peace. They just can't go to Burger King and get a triple waffle on them. Exactly. No, exactly. They can't <laughs> do all that. You know, they can't not, have not, it. Not it's, without he, it being a spectacle. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So that's what the thing, that was always the dynamic with Spider-Man and Mary Jane. Whereas Irish and the Flash, you never saw these problems. Well, and one of the one of the things is, maybe because Flash was so fast, he could he could take care of the issues, you know what I'm saying? But before blink of an eye, be right yeah. back before Irish, me making yeah, the children. You don't even know. <laughs> you don't even know. It's, you know what I'm saying? Just, just but, like how she didn't know she she almost <laughs> fell, he just kind of oh, mm -hmm. yeah, oh thank you. She was like huh what happened? Mm -hmm, exactly you know, but their relationship it was it was as beautiful as uh, that relationship between those two guys and the Last of Us. Yeah, the, the, you know what the I'm TV saying? show. Yeah, yeah that yeah. And, and it, it was it was that beautiful. It was that caliber, man. I absolutely loved Iris. I want to see more of her. I want to see more of her and Barry relationship. I want to see that. That was the most beautiful thing to me was the best thing about this movie. You know, this was a great movie. This is uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths. It was great. That there was the best, you know, because like I said, for me, it ain't all about, it, it, it don't always have to be about blowing up buildings and karate fight. It don't <laughs> always have to be about that. They really took their time to tell this story. They took their time to let us get to see characters interact. Let us see how characters are. That's yeah. what I liked about this. Uh, Iris, she get she get a one hundred for me. You know, I, I loved it. 